Phantom Controls YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be demonstrating our Soft Start. A Soft Start is a device that helps a compressor start off smoothly so you don't get a large thump that you hear when the compressor starts. It reduces the stress on the compressor, it reduces the stress on your whole mechanical system so it's not vibrating when it starts. So it doesn't vibrate when it starts. My paper's blown away. Um, this device is used uh, in residential units, RV units, as well as industrial applications that you saw in my other video where I'm working with the altitude water guys where I have several of these being tested right now. And this is part of the testing. When you're introducing a new product, you want to make sure it works in all environments. So today I'll be putting it on this residential unit, which is a three-ton unit. It has a lock rotor over here, LRA lock rotor amps, basically the number of amps it requires to start the compressor. The running load amps will be about 14 amps. So once the compressor has started, the unit will draw 14 amps. Now, again, I have the unit here. This is a typical wiring diagram for a soft start. As you will see, it's four wires. Not very complicated when you look at this drawing. But when you look at your drawing here on a, on a unit, whether it's an RV or a residential unit, you're gonna see a lot of wires. The key things to notice here are gonna be the wires for the compressor. And if the unit comes with what they call it, uh, a start capacitor with a start relay, or sometimes they have another device called a PTCR, those devices need to be removed. In, in this particular unit, it doesn't exist. All you're going to see over here is just the capacitors, the run capacitor, and the contactor. Which means it doesn't have a start capacitor, and it doesn't have a PTCR that you're going to have to remove. What we're first going to do is, I'm going to show you how many amps this unit draws when it first starts. And then, we're going to show you how many amps it draws after I install this. So right now the unit, again, it will also come with a installation kit. This helps you modify the wires, install these on the wires so that you can install it on your system. Different systems have different connections, so there's lots of stuff available here in the kit, whether it's for an RV or a residential. This is capable of 50 amps for a residential unit. Um, smaller unit will be our 20 amp version, which will be available coming soon as well, once we finish all our testing. Available with an app. All my products come with Bluetooth capability, so you'll be able to use the app to monitor the system and see what faults it has. My system is on a Honeywell thermostat, so I'm going to use my app to lower the temperature inside to make the compressor come on. And we're going to watch when the compressor comes on what the peak amps are gonna be. Of course, all compressors have a short delay before they turn on. As you can see, the inrush current on, on my cold startup here was 62.4 amps. It's a little less than what's on the, uh, on the tag, and that's only because it's a little bit cooler out today. If it was a really hot day, these amps would be closer to the rating. But when you're looking at inrush current, it's the locked rotor amps on the compressor itself, and that's how you base your equations. My unit's capable and has measured to reduce the inrush current by 80%. We're gonna see how well we do today. Now I just turned off the unit, and of course to make my installation follow all the safety requirements, turn off the power. I'm gonna go inside, turn off the two breakers for the inside unit and outside unit. And outside there's also a, a disconnect for the unit on residential homes. That's a requirement by code. And all you do is you pull this out and now you've killed the power to the outside unit. But as an extra precaution, I'm also gonna turn off the breakers inside the house. Okay, as we're doing our installation, of course I had taken off the panel, I turned off my power, circuit breakers. 
I went ahead and added my terminals right here. This will be the run winding. This is your, these two are much thicker. As you'll notice, they're 10 gauge wire. These are 14 gauge wire. This is actually power for the electronics. This is your start capacitor. Then this is on your run windings directly to the compressor. And this is your L2 connection. Now, with these residential units, they actually give you a nice little hole punch out right there that you can feed the wires in from the bottom. And let us, or you can choose to, you know, drill your own wire, your hole to run your wires through. I chose this as this might be a, a temporary solution for now. Our systems will be sent with one of these grommets um, for the, to protect the wires. But in this case, this hole was a little bit smaller. So what I did was just wrap some tape around where the wires will be sitting. And I'm gonna install some double-sided tape on the back of the unit. Again, these are my prototypes. So this is, uh, doesn't have it on there, but the final product will have tape available if you choose to use a tape or some other means to you know connect it to your system. Right now I'm gonna use this double-sided tape, which works great. Or you can choose to use the holes and, and tap into the sheet metal to, to do the installation. What you will see here, I'm gonna go ahead and connect the blue wire that's going to the start. My system here, it's the orange wire, according to the, the schematic for the unit. So I'm connecting my blue wire for the start. My black wire, I'm going to connect to the input power that's coming in on the, on the contactor, on the other side of the contactor, the output side. This is your input side where the power comes in. This is the output side where it feeds the unit. Now I'm gonna also connect my red right here, my insulated red onto the unit. I'm gonna squeeze this a little bit just to make sure it's a nice snug connection. connected here onto the contactor again on the output side okay and here the brown wire which is your run winding I'm going to go ahead and crimp it with on this complete I've tied the the run windings to my brown wire and now we're gonna start the unit of course we'll clean this up tie wrap this make it nice and neat but first we'll go ahead and complete our testing and see what our what our inrush current looks like now uh, to start the unit yep. we're gonna reconnect our amp probe we're gonna look at the run windings now I'm gonna go inside flip the breakers back on I'm gonna reconnect my disconnect outside it only goes one way. If you put it the other way, it won't, it won't insert all the way in. Now that we've powered on the system, we're going to... I've lowered the set point so the unit will turn on. Should come on any minute. So as you can see, the unit just started and it read a peak current of 12.3 amps. And if you notice early in the, in the beginning of the video, when the compressor started, the meter shook off the foundation and, and dropped to the side. 
this time much smoother start and the meter is still in place the running amps are about 8.4 amps for both the compressor and the fan if I were to look at just the compressor it's running about 7.8 amps now again the cold start measure came in at 62.5 amps we just measured 12.5 that is a significant, I'll do the calculations in a minute, but that is a significant reduction. So the unit drew 62.5 amps when it started without the soft start. After the soft start, it went to 12.5. That's a reduction of 50 amps. That's also a reduction of 80% on the inrush current. Again, this unit, there's no learning mode. It has a patent pending technology where we detect when the compressor is starting. That's how we're able to achieve 80% reduction every time, every start. So I'd like to recap what we did today. We did a test on the unit without a soft start. Then we did a test with the unit with the soft start. What are the benefits of having a soft start on a residential unit where you have lots of power, it's always available. Well, it reduces the wear and tear on your unit. Like I mentioned, the vibration, you could tell the difference with the soft start. The unit did not shake, you did not hear that thump. On an RV with this unit, it will never wake you up in the middle of the night when the compressor is cycling on and off. My neighbor's unit over there, when it turns on, I can hear it in my bedroom. Hopefully they'll get a soft start from it. The unit, if we just went through a hurricane here in Florida, if I did happen to lose power with the soft start, and my 6,000 watt generator that I have, I'd be able to start this unit, believe it or not, on my generator and power my house as well. Those are the benefits. You're, you're hurricane ready, you're off the grid ready if you have generators or solar. Having a soft start install on your residential unit is a must with hurricanes. It's a must if you want to be able to still have air conditioning, and sleep comfortably at night, get a soft start. It's always ready. I've just tie wrapped everything nice and tight, nice and neat. I'm gonna reinstall the cover on the unit. install um, again it's part of my testing and validation of uh, new designs so it will be running on this unit this product will be available uh, in December uh, I should have the small one available as well but the, the residential version which is a 50 amp rated 115 to 230 volts uh, for the higher voltage again I have several units out there undergoing field trials. I'm doing one here at my own home, home. It's validated. So it will be available on our website for sale. 